So what we've got is a high probability that our money is going to be worth less. Asset prices are going to rise, but our wages won't, which is the big problem. So we're, our future selves are getting poorer because we can't afford as many assets. And we've got this massive wave of debts to be refinanced. So that's normally a very positive backdrop for crypto. Lots of liquidity. And liquidity is what drives all markets. But crypto is the super massive black hole that sucks in so much capital when this happens. Weeks of ETF dumping pushed Bitcoin below $39,000 last month. After a few frustrating days above $42,000, the leading cryptocurrency appears ready to take off. After hitting $11,000 on Monday, Bitcoin dropped. At $42,000 till Wednesday, it began a promising rise, climbing quickly to roughly $48,000 per coin, according to CoinMarketCap. The leading cryptocurrency has gained about 10% in the last week and 4.77% in the last 24 hours. But True Vision founder and CEO Raul Pal expects a bigger rally before the 2024 Hing event in April. Remember, Bitcoin and crypto will rise more during the bull market. A former Goldman Sachs executive anticipates a 431% Bitcoin price surge before the cycle ends. He predicts 700% and 8.52% growth for Ethereum and Solana before the cycle ends in 2025. The notable macro analyst explains why he is bullish about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana this cycle and long-term in his newest Weathen interview. See why Buddy is positive about crypto in 2024 and how central banks will force more people into crypto at the end of the video. Let's look at those two component parts, main parts. One was the debt cycle. That's not changing. In fact, the governments are issuing more debt to pay the interest on the previous debt. And that's pushed interest rates up and it's made it even harder. So the debt keeps going up. Okay, so we haven't solved that one. And it's just accelerating because we're now having to pay the interest on the COVID um, bond issuance, debt issuance. So it, it's going vertical right now. So we know they're incentivized to con continue this path. On the other side is, are they going to debase the currency? Well, they've been doing the opposite in 2022. Why crypto had such a bear market, as most things did, is they were taking liquidity out because there was inflation. So here we are where if we look at trueflation, which is a on blockchain measure of inflation, it's at like 1.4%. So inflation's come down. It's not the boogeyman anymore. Growth, interest rates are too high for that kind of environment at 5.5%. So the probability is they're going to lower interest rates. We're seeing China in an economic mess. They've got a full debt deflation going on. Same issues, aging population, high debts everything's blowing up, they're likely to stimulate further. The Europeans are likely to end up stimulating further and eventually the US will stimulate more as well because they need to get growth to pay for these interest costs. So that is what lies ahead. And then we've got the other sweet spot in the middle of this, which is politicians hand out candy during elections. And the candy that everybody wants is stimulus. So they will hand out stimulus, which needs to be paid for, it either ends up on the Fed balance sheet or some other liquidity measure to allow the government to fund itself. So what we've got is a high probability that our money is going to be worth less. Asset prices are going to rise, but our wages won't, which is the big problem. So we're, our future selves are getting poorer because we can't afford as many assets. And we've got this massive wave of debts to be refinanced. So that's normally a very positive backdrop for crypto. Lots of liquidity. And liquidity is what drives all markets. But crypto is the super massive black hole that sucks in so much capital when this happens. I mean, it's a mouthful. I, 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 I didn't get it in the beginning, Raul, I, because I went to a classical economic training, you know, I'm going to date myself, mid-80s, we were talking about stagflation and the Fed and managing the debt. And uh, when I left school, I think the U.S. government had under a trillion and a half dollars of debt at that time. Uh, we've hyper-cycled this debt. And so let's just give everybody this, this understanding. From George Washington to George W. Bush, seven trillion dollars of debt, which we all thought was staggering. But we're now uh, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, Joe Biden. They add $27 trillion of debt. 
we're at 34 trillion. So, you know, average citizen, will explain it. How are they going to be okay? Is the average citizen going to be okay? Can the government get out of this? Will the government just have to print the 34 trillion dollar coin? What happens, Raul? So the average citizen's not yeah. going to be okay until unless they take action. This is why people are angry, whether you're on the left or whether you're the right, you're, you're angry because the system is failing you. And what's happening is you're a wage slave and you can't buy a house or you can't invest as much of the stock market that your parents could do. You just, A, cost of living is high, but B, asset prices keep coming up. And that's because they're debasing the currency. And what debasing the currency is, it sounds like a complicated economics term, but what it basically means is they're robbing you of the power to buy assets by, it's been on average 15% a year since 2008. So you're losing the ability to buy assets by 15% a year. So each year you sit in a pile of cash and don't buy a house. That house is roughly going up at 15% a year. That's bananas. You sit on cash for two years or you don't have any savings, it gets more and more expensive. What they're actually doing here is taxing you, but by hiding it. It's like a socialization of all of this costs. Pal is one of many analysts that expects crypto adoption to rise in 2024. At the start of last year, Crypto.com predicted a 39% increase in crypto owners worldwide by 2022, despite the market's small size. In December 2022, there were 425 million crypto owners, up from 306 million in January. In the first half of 2023, Bitcoin users increased 20%. Crypto owners increased 21% from 425 million in 2022 to 516 million in June 2023, according to Crypto.com. During the 2024 bull market, this number should climb more. Crypto owners might reach 950 million worldwide by the end of the year according to Bitfinex analysts in December. The analysts suggested this rise could be readily achieved if positive market circumstances maintained all year, says. Looking ahead to 2024, and contingent upon market conditions, we anticipate that the number of global cryptocurrency owners could escalate to between 850 and 950 and 950 million. This forecast demonstrates that cryptocurrency is gaining popularity worldwide. Recall the PAL conversation. But what's so massively unfair is it disproportionately hits people who are wage earners who don't own assets. So you and I, we have assets. And so your assets offset, but maybe your wages, your, your income doesn't rise as much. But for the average person, they clock in, they go to work, they come home. Even if you're a dentist or a doctor or a lawyer, it, you're still in the same boat because your wages are not rising as fast as asset prices. So you're just your future self gets poorer because what an asset is, is, and it can be the same for Bitcoin or gold or real estate or equities. It's a way of putting your savings into something that you can get them back in the future. So it's your future consumption. It's your future life is in those. But you can buy less of them. So your future life is getting poorer. So everybody's getting screwed over here and they don't understand why. Fancy words like debasement come along. It's like, I don't really understand what that means. It means right. they are robbing you of the power to use your wages to gain an advantage for yourself later in life. You're dead right is that people don't understand because it looks like their stock market, their 401k has gone up and all of this. But that's only a small percent. That's like 10% of the population who have assets. And those people are very happy with it. The more assets you own, the more powerful you are, the more assets you probably own, the less likely you are going to call the authorities into question. The average guy working in Cincinnati who suddenly can't make his ends meet and can't buy an apartment, what voice does he have in this? And he's being taxed at 15% a year and has been 15% a year. And he has been since 2008. And he just doesn't understand what's going on. He doesn't know who to blame. So what they blame is one party or the other, and it's not. When I drove one, I was like, this is like a quantum leap in cars. And I've had Ferraris, Porsches, BMWs, Mercedes, I've had them all. Got on this Tesla, I'm like, 
this was the iPhone moment of cars. It's like this is so much better than anything that's ever preceded it. And, uh, you know, I look, there's a few nice cars on the island here. It's not full of sports cars because the road's pretty crap. But there's a, there's a Bugatti and there's a few Ferraris and there's plenty of Porsches. My Tesla Model X Plaid is the second fastest car on the island. It's a seven-seater. Right. right. It's, they're crazy and they're, they're amazing cars. So I like them. And also, I like the fact that I don't have to go to the gas station. All of, we have to import all of our fuel on Ireland. It's, you know, it's expensive. If I can make a green choice, I'll take a green choice every day. Why not? You know, we live in a fragile little... Discuss PAL's forecasts and outlook in the comments below. Meanwhile, Finder, an independent comparison platform and information service provider, updated its Bitcoin price projections for 2024 based on a January 2024 survey of 40 crypto industry experts. Finder predicts Bitcoin's price will reach 77, 423 by 2024 and 122,666, 935 dollars by 2030. The information service provider reported that its analysts were more bullish than in its October 2023 survey and that neither survey's panelists thought Bitcoin's price would crack $100,000 by 2025 or $300,000 by 2030. Most panelists think Bitcoin is a decent buy right now. 57.5% think Bitcoin is a buy at its current price, 37.5% think it's a good time to hold, and 5% say it's time to sell. Do you agree? What are your predictions for Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and other top cryptocurrencies in 2024 and beyond? Leave your comments below, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.